Hey everybody, this is Frank Hannon, lead guitarist of Tesla, and you're listening to Brigade Radio 1. You're listening to Brigade Radio 1. I met the parents. You know, Pat Conroy, who wrote The Lord's of Discipline, he, um, it, it's really based on a lot of true, true life stories with him. Yeah. So he, um, you know, there was an actual John Poteet. And, you know, the parents were very uh, proud of, of how I portrayed their son. Good. And I have a letter from them saying thank you for you know, making our son look the way he did. And I said, no, your son was who he was. And he tried to be a man and, and it didn't work for him at that point. You know, you know what? That's one of those highlights that I think actors typically <laughs> live for when they get that kind of acknowledgement. You know, you, you, you went through flash dance. We'll cover that in a minute. Cause <laughs> that started a buddy of mine too, leaving oh, my, my fear. Man. Yeah. Who worked with my, another friend of mine, director, Jonathan Lynn and clue and mm-hmm. Lynn and I would tell lots of, or Lynn in particular would tell a lot of leaving stories from that set. I got, a, I got a lot. Yeah, I bet you do. And then, obviously, Christine is the hallmark. What's interesting is that movie's kind of like uh, it's that that movie's kind of regained some tempo, I think, because it's up for it's some anniversary. Uh, that movie I've always liked. Well, it's but, the 35th anniversary of Christine. That's hard to believe. This year, 35 years, man. I um, I, I'm I'm blown away by it. I excuse me. It's become this incredible cult film i mean i i I think the reason why people love the film so much especially men Mm -hmm. is the car that that is a beautiful it's a plymouth fury i i I believe a 1958 plymouth fury yeah and you know what's really interesting is that there are so many car clubs around the united states they are, they are everywhere. And these car clubs are all about who's got the best looking Christine, who's got the, 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 the car used Christine. It's crazy. I want you to walk me through the yeah. production in a moment. But what's interesting, if you know the book versus the Carpenter production, he made Carpenter made some very smart changes from the book. In mm-hmm. the book, the car is haunted by the ghost of the man who sells it to him. Yes, yes. And. Don't- Darnell. 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 No, no, no. Darnell's no. the parts guy. Le, 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 uh, oh God. Le, We're it's gonna a, look it's like an idiots. L. His his name starts with an L in it. I know it. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, you know it's because Robert we need, Blossoms played that Robert, role too. Yes, who's a brilliant actor. Oh, but God, because of course we need to know the name, we can't come up with the name. Le, it's um, a it's an L. Like come on, don't <laughs> don't embarrass me. Bay. I knew it was LeBay. an L. Right. I knew it was an L. In the book, the car is haunted by the ghost of LeBay, but in the film, they make it look like it's more of like a, just the a devil. satanic it, it, car, yeah, it was a satanic which thing. is kind of was especially in the time pretty unnerving. And I thought those were all pretty smart changes. And John Carpenter coming off the thing, I felt he knew a thing or two, despite that film sort of tumbling. Although I love that movie, you know, I think he knew a thing or two about the execution of a, of tension. So how did you? Were you the first one cast in Christine? Uh, it was interesting. Um, and, and and is it a role that uh, did you have to? Well, first take me through the casting. Okay. You're, uh, were you the? You weren't the first one. I was we're, pretty close. You were well, in the so beginning. what happened was I kind of cheated a little. At this point, my career was doing pretty good. You know, right. I, I had I had been under a, a three picture contract with Paramount Studios, and I had to do three films. Uh, th- for Paramount, uh, one the first one was Lords of Discipline. The second one was Flashdance, and then I got a script called Police Academy Number One, mm-hmm. and I, I I was like, wow, okay, this is interesting. Who knew there was going to be twenty five after that? But then I got Christine, so I said to my agent at the time, I, I want to do Christine because it's a John Carpenter 
directed movie, and it's a, a, a Stephen King adaptation. Yeah. It's like, oh, I, I want to do that. It's going to live forever in some Who context. Knew? Who you know? knew? I just wanted to, wanted to do it. And, you know, I had, I had already seen Halloween a ton of times. I'd already seen The Thing, which was incredible. Yeah, unbelievable. And, movie. and I, I wanted to work with John Carpenter. And uh, so the casting was, I... Um, I went in there and I got, and I had to, they do this thing called mixing and matching. And Carpenter knew that he wanted what, he knew the bad guys that he wanted. And um, the the person I thought who was going to get Buddy Reperton um, was uh, Bill Forsyth. And he, he was crazy in the audition. But, you know, they cast Bill Ostrander, who makes a he's a perfect buddy Reperton. he is perfect. you know with the with the the sideburns the long hair you know he was he was incredible in the film and then uh, still a very good friend of mine and also a, a really good friend Stephen tash who played the other uh one of the other guys and then there was stuart charno so there were four bad guys and and i i was cast as the first bad guy believe right. it or not now when you after the movie, like we're gonna stick with this for a moment, but yeah. when that movie came out and you're, uh, you know, you got the role and that movie hits theaters, and I think you're even on the soundtrack cover, uh, running for your it's, life. It's incredible, yeah. Uh, do people look back and go, Moochie? And are you all the time? Um, because the actress who played Nellie on Little House of the Prairie, one of her stories that stuck with me is when she would do the Hollywood Christmas Parade, people would throw rocks at the car. Wow. That was carrying her because they couldn't separate Nellie from. Yeah. You know, and so did you get that with Moochie? Like, oh, this is the guy who... Well, I'll, I'll give you... Or do people... Yeah. So, you know, this year and last year, um, I've been lucky enough to go to with the cast around the United States to do conventions mm-hmm. and we do some autographs and all this stuff. So here's the best way of looking at what, what happened to me one time. I was um, at a convention, I believe it was in Cincinnati, and... I had a line in front of me that was that was like incredible, but about five to ten guys in, I don't remember what it was. I, there was this guy vibing me. I mean, he was just giving me a. I, you can't see it on the red, but I mean, he was just giving me a real bad vibe. Yeah, for the ladies and gentlemen in the audience, he's <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm, I'm Malcolm's doing a looking right like now. he's. <laughs> it's a western showdown now. Yes, it is. So, but I was. Uh, so I said to the uh, woman sitting next to me. Uh, they, they're, they're counters. They take the money from people, and, you know. And so I, I just basically sign autographs and right. smile and be a good guy. Of course. This guy, I said to the, the, the girl, "Can you keep an eye on this guy? There's something going on here." And finally, this guy gets to me, and I go, "Hey, how you doing?" And he just stares at me. He doesn't say a word. I go, "I go, hey, what's up, man? What, what, what's going on?" Doesn't say a word. I said. What can I do for you? Can, is there anything? I, he goes, guys like you in my high school picked on me all the time. Uh-huh. I said, whoa. I, I said, you know what? Guess what? I'm not that guy. I'm just the guy who, who, played, who, right. who played that role. And I'm sorry that that happened to you. I said, can I give you an autograph for free? And he goes, guys like you picked on me. And I thought, I'm going to... He's going to shoot me. I, I really, I, and I said, what can I do? And he goes, nothing. And he walked away. That's actually tragic to hear. Uh, I, I couldn't believe it. So well, I got to tell you, our first conversation was nothing like Moochie Wells, you know, and I, I think most of us who worked in the business understand, you know, the bad guys always do seem to have the most fun during production too. Did the four yeah. of you guys kind of oh, yeah. get together and like hang out and say, hey, here's how we're going to play it? And... No. Well, here's what happened. Um, John Carpenter, see, the thing about Carpenter is that he's a very technical director. He's mm. all about technical. But he did say, and this was, it was really interesting. So um, Steve Tash, myself, and Bill Ostrander, uh, Carpenter said in one of the rehearsals when we were in the, um, in the uh, uh, the shop scene, what he w- and it was the one where Bill Ostrander put the uh, or Buddy Refferton, whatever you want to call him, put the uh, switchblade through the uh, bag and it kind of pours poor little Arnie's yeah. yogurt all over the floor. But what happened was, is before that, Carpenter said, "Guys, I want you to pick on him a little bit more. I want you to just to just to pick on him in the rehearsal and 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 just." make him make Keith Gordon who's an incredible guy lovely guy make him uncomfortable and a good director and in his a, own oh right. my god I'll tell you yeah. something there but um, 
you just pick on the guy a little bit more. So in the rehearsal, we picked on him. And it was funny because at the end of the rehearsal and when we were about to shoot, Keith Gordon went over to Carpenter and said, hey, uh, John, uh, can you tell Malcolm, especially Malcolm, to cool it down a little bit because I'm uncomfortable with what he's doing. And, um, and Carpenter said, yeah, I'll go talk to him. So Carpenter came over right before the scene. And he goes, Malcolm, I want you to piss this guy off even more. I want you to pick on, on him even more. I said, fine. Yeah. So that, yeah, that's where, where it was. You know, the cast sells it. You better subscribe to this channel before you look uncool.